We've looked at the basic structure of a sentence where you have that single line that has the subject and the verb on it. Um, but there are some variations <coughs> on that particular structure. For example, if you have more than one subject, uh, where you have more than one entity that is acting together to do the verb, or you may have more than one verb, more than one predicate. And so what you have to do then is change the basic structure just a bit so that you account for having multiple subjects or multiple predicates. Uh, you kind of branch out. So for example, I may have Oliver Twist. Oh, let me. We may have a compound subject. Uh, so we may have a sentence something like Oliver Twist and his companions suffered the tortures of slow starvation. So what we have to do with this particular sentence is we have two subjects. We have the one subject, Oliver Twist. We have the other subject, his companions. And so what we have to do is make a branching structure in our basic sentence framework. So we will have two lines for subjects which will then come together. And then we have our vertical line to show where the subject ends, the verb begins. And so we fill this framework with the two subjects. First subject is Oliver Twist. And the second subject is his companions. And what we do, we have the word and that's connecting these two. So we just put a dotted line from one to the other. And then we put our conjunction on that dotted line. And. So we have our compound subject. And then we can go ahead and work the rest of the sentence. We have our verb suffered. Um, we have our direct object, tortures, and then we have um, our modifiers. We have the and we have of slow starvation. So that will be our structure when we've got multiple subjects. We have a branch here that shows it, and then it comes together to show both of those subjects suffered. Now, we may also have a compound object or a compound predicate, pardon me. A compound predicate will have one subject but multiple um, objects. So if I have something like the master aimed a blow at Oliver's head pinioned him by his arm and shrieked aloud for the beetle.
So what we have in this particular sentence, we only have one subject, the master, but then we have him doing multiple things. So we've got multiple predicates in this one. And so just like when you had your subjects branching out to separate lines, you're going to, in this sentence, have your predicates branching out into a separate line. So we'll start. with our subject, the master. And at this point, we're going to branch out to show we have multiple predicates. In this case, we actually have three of them. So we have um, that he aimed, and we have a direct object a blow, at Oliver's head, and it's aimed is what's being done at Oliver's head. So we're modifying our verb aimed, And then we have another branch of our predicate. And once again, we have pinioned as our verb. We have him as our object. And we have by his arm, which once again, it's acting as an adverb because it's describing pinioned. How did he pinion him? He pinioned him by his arm. So that's modifying pinioned. And then we have our third branch. We have um, shrieked, and we have some modifiers here, allowed for, the beetle. And then we have our conjunction and we tie all of these things together. And this is supposed to be a straight line. I didn't have quite the letters straight. And we can use the word and as part of our tying it together. So here we have our multiple predicates. Each one can be attached to our uh, subject. The master aimed a blow at Oliver's head. The master pinioned him by his arm. And the master shrieked for the beetle. And this all branches out. So when you have a compound like that, you want to make sure everything fits. This is where, if you have a trouble with some of your grammar gets a little mixed up, and uh, maybe your instructor has told you uh, to watch out for faulty parallelism, uh, sometimes drawing a diagram like this will help you to make sure that each of those components in that predicate actually fits.